Hello everyone and welcome to the RevitKid.com. Today I'm going to continue on this uh, residential Revit series that I've been doing on the blog uh, by taking um, residential projects that I've created and uh, breaking into little details and different aspects of it. Um, so last week we talked a little bit about this this uh, front slat wall and today we're actually going to talk about a roof bracket. So uh, what that roof bracket looks like uh, on this project is actually on the back here you can see there's a fully parametric roof bracket. It's this angled bracket. Um, in the rendering, it looks like this. You can see it marching along the uh, Ngawa here, which is our courtyard. And this is fully parametric. Uh, the angles can be adjusted and so on and so forth. And so we're actually going to talk quite a bit about um, angular parameters and some of the techniques I use to do that. Before we move on, um, if you want to download this family, I have a link below. Um, please subscribe to this channel uh, here on YouTube. As you'll see from this video and multiple videos that um, as a subscriber here on YouTube, uh, you typically will get these these um, videos before uh, the blog gets them and um, and sometimes even more content than the blog has. So now let's talk about this this uh, this bracket here. So I'm going to minimize this image here. So here's the bracket in place in this project. So if I edit the family, you could see here's our bracket. And so today what I want to focus on is not necessarily creating um, the actual beam and these uh, these bolts and so on and so forth. Like I said, there'll be a link to download this family. You can feel free to mess around with it quite a bit. But what I really want to talk about is the angular parameter. So if I change the parameter of this angle right here, which is called angle type in to 30 degrees, you'll notice that it'll actually go up 30 degrees. And so I'm doing it off of the top. And so what I want to talk about is the technique that I use to create this. Um, a lot of you who have created Revit families, if you have not, um, you know, this is just a great little tip for when you start doing it. If you're really interested in creating Revit families, be sure to check out uh, BIM After Dark Volume 3. It's a complete uh, video course on creating families that I created. I'll also link, link that below for you. But what I want you to notice is that if I go to my elevation view, I actually don't have any angular parameters. So a lot of people who create angle, angle, angular parameters, um, typically will be doing something like this, where I create an angle, uh, or I create a reference plane or reference line, and I, I create an angular parameter, and then you adjust, and then you set this to a parameter, and you go on, and, and you go on your merry way. Uh, the problem with that is it, it tends to break um, when you go to zero and ninety, and it does a couple other weird things. And so the technique I use when I create angles in any family now, um, I have to give credit to Marcelo or Mar yeah Marcelo um, from the Simply Complex blog. If you guys don't know Marcelo, I'll also link him below. Um, uh, awesome dude. But uh, at some conference, it was many years ago. He uh, he mentioned this technique, and it's, it sort of changed my life. And so what you may not have noticed in this family is this little teeny gray half donut thing right here. And so this family I created a while ago, so it's not the cleanest way to do it, but um, I'm going to show you how to do it a nice clean way. But what this is, is actually a revolve. And so you can use a revolve to drive angles in a family. And it actually is really clean, really nice, and um, really difficult to break when you set it up correctly. So let's talk about how we're going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new family. I'm going to go to File, New, Family. And we're just going to create a generic uh, face-based family. So generic model, face-based. I'll go to 3D just so you can see. Here we go. We just have a nice little face-based family. Go to shaded view. <clears throat> and the reason I use face-based is just because um, for the sake of what this family was and how I was using it in multiple different locations, it made sense to be face-based. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, if you want to use a face-based family, you can start with generic model face-based, and you can simply go up to family categories and change the category if you want it to be something like a structural element or so on and so forth but that's not what we want to focus on today. We want to focus on angles today. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to my front view. So I'm going to go to my elevation view. So I'm looking straight on and I'm going to create a revolve. And so revolve requires two things, it requires an axis line. So I'm going to draw an axis line across my horizontal here. I'm going to use the align tool and I'm actually going to align that with this reference plane and lock it just so that it stays. And then I'm going to draw a boundary line. So if I click boundary right here, I'm going to draw a rectangular boundary line just like this. And to be honest with you, I don't actually really care all that much about the, the size of this. This is actually going to be a sacrificial element that drives our angles. And so if I click finish and I go to 3D, 
you can see what we have here is a cylinder, which makes sense because it's being rotated around uh, uh, 360 degrees. But the cool thing about a revolve is you'll notice we have a start angle and an end angle. So if I was to change my end angle to less than 360, let's go to 90 and click apply. You'll notice instead of a, let's do 45 so that it's not as uh, an angle there. So you'll notice that instead of a, a full uh, cylinder, we actually have a little piece of pie. And what's really important about this piece of pie is that we have grips on either side. And you'll notice we also have an end angle and a start angle. So if I pull this grip, if you look on the properties where my mouse is here, the end angle, notice how that's going up and then going down and then going up and going down. And then if I do my start angle the other way, you'll see it's actually going in a negative direction in this way. So what does that mean? What that means is that we can actually uh, uh, create parameters that drive these two angles. So my start angle is the one we're going to use here. So we're going to use this, this start angle and we're actually going to add a parameter. So we're going to associate family parameter. We're going to add a new parameter. I'm going to leave it to type and I'm going to call this one bracket angle and click OK. So what I also like to do is I like to add a parameter to our start angle, which is going to be not the driver, but it's just going to be uh, a piece of our pie. And the reason I like to add this is what it does is it keeps our quote unquote pie the same shape if we add a little formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my family types and which is start angle. I'm just going to do my bracket minus five degrees. I'm sorry, bracket angle. Pay attention to those parameters, guys. So bracket angle minus five degrees. So that means is that as I move this bracket angle, if I go to 30, you'll notice the pie stays the same shape. And this just makes it a lot easier for the concept. 60, you'll see this moving around. Okay, so what's the key with this concept? The key here is that we have the shape, we have these faces, and that means we have a work plane that we can use. Okay, so we can actually draw and we can host things to this face. Okay, so this face here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to create extrusion. I'm gonna click set. I'm gonna click pick plane. And I'm gonna actually pick the face of my revolve right here. Now, if I draw a rectangle on here, just like that, and click finish. You can see I've got myself a nice little rectangle. If I want, I can use, I can set up a whole bunch of parameters in here just like I did with my family. Like I said, I want you to understand the concept of this. So let's just say thickness, and so on and so forth. If you wanted to change the thickness of this, what you'll notice in the family that I have is that I did a lot of this in inside this actual family. What I might do now is I might actually create this whole beam system, the beam with uh, the two bolts um, outside of it and just host, uh, load it in as a nested family, but it is what it is. So. What happened here is I drew an extrusion and it's linked or it's hosted to this face. So now if I change the angle from 25 to 45, click apply, notice how my actual beam moves with it. And so that's the key. We're using this revolve to actually drive our angles. Okay, now you're saying, okay, well, we have this stupid revolve in here, Jeff. What do we do with it? Well, simply just click it and uncheck where it says visible. What that means is that it's only going to be visible when you're in the family environment, not the project environment. So if I save this and I load it into my project, what you'll notice is that I can actually place this family on my walls. And if I select it, I can go to edit type and I can modify my angles. So bracket angle right here, I can say 45 degrees, click apply. And you can see it's adjusting 30 degrees apply and so on and so forth. And you also don't see that revolve. So that's the technique. I want to thank Marcelo for, for teaching it. So next time you have to create a family where you're driving angles, don't go to your reference lines with angular parameters and reference planes and trying to figure out these angles because I promise you it will break. This right here, this is a, a rig that is essentially uh, break proof. So thanks again to Marcelo. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe below and I'll talk to everyone later um, in the next video.